Okay, welcome back. Let's finish up Paris here. Oh, where were we? Oh, that's right, it's start of our turn. I was thinking I need to reinforce both of these guys, and I do. Um, I was trying to get close enough. But I'm not. So what? Here's the plan. I'm gonna move in close enough so I can artillery next turn. Up here, it's pretty straightforward. Artillery, and then. So I was able to finish him off, and then this artillery is going to immediately start moving back up to the front to help out. Now as far as our planes go, I was thinking I need to rebase, and you can see I got bases to the south here in Paris. Both of them are going to be pretty far away from... I need this base at Le Mans. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebase to Orléans with everybody. So I'm leaving that alone, and I do need to reinforce, but I want to charge forward. And one thing I keep forgetting to do is there's trains. Alright, so this guy's damaged. Hold on a second. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so this guy's damaged. I don't want to move him too close to the front line. But I know they have a plane. So I'm going to move him there. This one's not as damaged. I'll move him there. This guy's in bad shape. So what can I do? That'll cost 127, paid. 202, it's expensive, but I'll do it. This is my one-man wrecking crew, so we're gonna just go in and annihilate. But, and you can see here, look at this, they're just stacked at Le Mans. My planes are going to have a bit of a trouble down there. So yeah, we had to spend a whole turn basically just charging across the landscape here. This one only has four strength. Well, at least move them to there. everything. Oh, here, we got this little button we can press. And it is. Let's end turn. Alright, it's raining again. My infantry here I should be able to finish him off, and they do. So we can get a nice... No, 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 no. Undo, undo. How come I can't go on a... Oh. I can do a train, but I need to have an unspent attack action, so I'm just going to go ahead and move them. As far as recon goes... Yep, we can at least circle him. Artillery-wise, 
charge forward. Okay, we did an overrun. We definitely want to come down here. The issue is, is that's an anti-tank. So what do I want to do? This is my one-man wrecking crew. Here, what we're essentially doing is we're just blitzkrieging across the terrain. God, that anti-tank unit is just such a problem. And this is... So we're going to bring artillery down. So next round we can do some damage. This guy needs to heal. Air. Yeah, not willing to take the damage at the moment. Who else do I have? What do I do with him? Okay, let's move down. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about my planes. One of the things I did on my break is I got coffee, so I'm very happy now. Okay, um... Yeah, I guess I'm gonna hit end turn here. Artillery, but this guy's the problem. So I'm gonna move in, hit that anti tank unit. Gotta do it. Bring him in. So then I can anti tank that tank. This is going to be multi-layered. It's my ability to go in and punch them. So I'm going to back him up so I can heal him. That's all the further he can move. Wrecking crew is gonna just obliterate him and does use the tank. So let's try the train. I need to move him first.
definitely doing a number on me there. All right, so what was the reason I did all that? I took a lot of losses because I want to come in with my planes and tear them apart. So now that I took out the anti-air, I can really do a number on them. And I'm going to go suppress this anti-tank unit. Suppress their artillery. Just straight up. Oh no, I can't even get to their tank. But I can at least get there. Does nothing. See, like that's an anti tank unit with nine strength. And he's gonna take four damage. It's largely because of this thing. His anti tank is still. So this is Recon. So we're just coming in and having a field day. That airfield might be worth moving to. So yeah, we'll go down and maybe take that. And I don't want to move out of the way. All right, that wasn't as exciting as I was hoping it would be. Ooh. Okay. That anti-tank is now exposed. So I could swing around and get him, but let's let's do first things first. This is my one-man wrecking crew. I have no idea if he's even gonna be needed anywhere. Should I do I dare move all the way in and try to take that city? No, I don't dare. I come up with my scout and I can see clearly now so I'm gonna move up with my infantry and just position ourselves for next turn this is a case of I could probably try to take that city I'm gonna, oh look cavalry there butt kicked by cavalry. So there are troops back here, so I need to be careful with just charging in. Because I could get ambushed. I think I'm going to just stay there for now. And let's talk about this puzzle. Can suppress. Suppressing him is big. The fact that he moved that tank down there means that I can't get him with my anti-tanks. But this guy can. And I think I should suppress their artillery. regular artillery. I know I need to take the city, but he's my largest problem. There we go. 
can cut all these guys off from supply, so... circled now. And I forgot, we still have two fighters, so we can finish off some guys here. There goes one. There goes two. turn there. That cavalry has me a little bit worried. <clears throat> Alright. Completely undefended. Interesting. Undefended. for them to get He has no ammo left. He's toast. Alright, as far as airplanes go... Can I relocate anywhere closer yet? Get some equipment. Oh, that's a win. I would swear there was um, a green objective somewhere else that we hadn't taken up near uh, Khan, that harbor up there. Although we do 
get extra bonus prestige for winning early. Alright, well, it is what it is. And I know um, I'm only 20 minutes in because I took a break. Alright, so it looks like they're giving us a choice between North Africa and Barbarossa. Interesting. I said I, I know you can't see the uh, campaign all right so with Barbarossa there's north center and south and of course um, north and center go eventually north goes to Leningrad center goes to Kiev and then eventually uh, both of them go to the gates of Moscow Barbarossa south goes to Kiev and then Rostov but uh, just so you know, the two Kiev missions are different. And then all three of them merge to Moscow. So I think if I, obviously if I were to pick Barbarossa, I'm going to get one of those three, north, center, or south. Then eventually you can take Moscow, Kharkov 42, Sevastopol, Operation Blue, and then Stalingrad. Then from there is a choice to either escape from Stalingrad, which of course is you're going to go into Germany's losing scenarios and you're going to try to defend Berlin. Or you go along the Volga and then it takes you to Kubyshev and then eventually Sea Lion and all kinds of uh, what if scenarios. Now, the other option is to just go Africa and then that takes you down some historical African ones until you get to El Alamein. And then there, if you did El Alamein, you're then going to go uh, Operation Torch and then, again, defending Berlin. Or uh, if you choose Egypt, you're then going down the what-if, and you can take, it looks like you're going to take uh, Israel, Middle East, Persia, Caucasus, and then eventually Moscow in 43, uh, whereas the other Moscow was in 41, 42. Um, and then after Moscow 43, it's again Sea Lion, blah, blah, blah. So you do get to a small glimpse of Russia if you go the Africa path, but not nearly as much Russia as you would if you went Barbarossa. I mean, after Barbarossa, it's looking like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's ten scenarios of Russia. Oh my gosh. And it doesn't matter if I go Barbarossa, north, center, or south. It's ten scenarios of Russia. Um, if I go Africa, then I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven for sure, um, against Britain. I don't know, Persia, I'm assuming would also be Britain, so that would be eight. And then you have two Russian ones, Caucasus and Moscow 43. Um, interesting. I tend to like the African campaigns more. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, but it, I think the biggest takeaway I wanted you guys to understand is that um, uh, there's a lot of Russian scenarios in this. And it's going to be... If you, if you enjoy that, you're going to have plenty. But most games don't have a lot of African scenarios, and this one actually does. So... Obviously, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing Libya, and then El Alamein's about right here, if I remember correctly. So then we move into Egypt, and then Levant, of course we're going to be taking Israel, and then getting into Persia, and uh, Caucasus, which I'm assuming is going to be here. Um, I don't think it's over here, I think it's this one. Anyways, that's just me proving how bad my geography is. Um, this decision will significantly influence your campaign's future. See, that's a big thing. Um, you will either continue to fight Western powers or engage the Soviet Union for a considerable amount of battles. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're being honest there. <laughs> um, I think I want to continue fighting the Western powers. Let's do that. Oh, they nice, nicely highlight it. And of course, 
Barbarossa is huge. And there's three. So I'm assuming if I select Barbarossa, I then have to choose again. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do North Africa. So, with the end of your extended leave in Germany, you've decided to come join us in Africa, have you? Well, Head General, I hope you scraped the rust off your panzers and are ready for action once again. Our Italian friends are in trouble and we're moving in to assist. A fellow veteran of your campaign in France, newly promoted General Lieutenant Rommel, has some intriguing ideas I want to share with you. Rather than just hold the line here, Rommel has suggested a reconnaissance in force to probe the state of the British forces yeah all right so we got to capture some victory hatches. start here make contact with the leading British elements and see just how strong or weak their grip on the desert really is should you only encounter limited enemy resistance perhaps a detour to Benghazi would not be out of the question be warned that the African desert is a wide open and hostile place Offering little cover outside of scattered towns and villages clustered around the occasional oasis. So, plan your forces accordingly. Depending on the strength of resistance you encounter, I'd like to see if you can scout all the way to the outskirts of Tobruk. Here and here. Once your mission is completed, report back to me directly. I will handle any objections from Italian Commando Supremo. But the more successful your what recommission, a make a the easier that will be for me. I do make my life easy for once, Head General. Dismissed. Ooh, tank killer. Well, we're giving that to an anti-tank unit for sure. Um, we don't have a lot of extra prestige. That troubles me. Yeah, because once I finish replacing everybody's troops, I'm not going to have a lot of prestige left. And I'm assuming that by moving down to Africa, we now have all kinds of new units. I already spent a thousand. Another thousand. down to 1200 okay let's see what we got infantry wise nothing as I expected we got a new Panzer 3G 4E so we know we have we're at the D now so this would be just a little bit extra anti-tank 4E it's not that much of an improvement Never been really impressed with them. And I guess the Stug is no longer a prototype. Fighter wise, uh oh, BF 109, one extra attack against air. 87R should be better than the 87B. Slightly better against Navy. So these aren't huge upgrades. And then we got the DO 217. So that one's going to be slightly better. Actually, that's quite a bit better against the, than the JU 88. All right, well let's let's do upgrades first. 
these are obviously my paratroopers. I think, um... Yeah, let's start with our air units first. <clears throat> the JU-88. Upgrade to him for 30 bucks. Done. This one... Done. That's just clearly a. Well, he's le it does less damage against Navy. You can see the Navy drops from 16 down to 12. But I'm okay with that. 87B gets a little bit better at Navy, but it only costs 30. And you can see its movement improves by 1, and that's going to be helpful. Our fighter units. Improves by one, gets a little bit better defense. Its initiative is better. Yeah, it's a small upgrade, but it's definitely uh, definitely better. And these are cheap upgrades, so you know only cost twenty to do the upgrade. So why not? Um, I think from an anti-air perspective, there's nothing to improve upon here. Uh, you can see. For example, against air, these are all, that one at least does the same amount of damage versus air. Almost everything is like a downgrade. <laughs> um, so, not quite as good. From an artillery perspective, this little Sturmpanzer has not been super bad. Um, it would cost 90 some slots to really upgrade to the Mars. Uh, 190, actually. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. That one I would like to upgrade to the Mars, but I think we're going to hold out. We've been doing just fine. Yeah, okay, so from an anti-tank perspective, this one is better than the Panzer Jager, Panzer Jager 1B here. Um, by four points, in fact. It even has more ammo uh, and more initiative, so it's like better in almost every way. The problem is, is that you would then need to pay for a transport, so it's a significant amount of money. So I'm just going to hold out. I mean, they're at least functional, and we're going to get some experience points. And these guys are what you're trying to do is you're trying to get them experience points. They're really a not an asset yet, but once the better motorized anti-tanks come out, uh, then we can really uh, get it cranking. And I think, you know, if we were battling Russia, you're going to see some of that really come out. But Okay, let's go to the... Yep, no need to upgrade those. And the tanks. So... The Panzer 3H, as you can see, Slightly better initiative, better in the defense values, and better versus tanks. But since I have anti-tanks, and I know they're not super fantastic, but I do have them, I think I'm going to do the 4E, which gives them a little bit better against tanks. It's only a $20 upgrade, that's the other thing. Yeah. I'm going to go to the 4E. As far as the infantry, I mean, I have a lot of core slots left. Uh, there's a part of me that wants to get one more infantry, uh, largely because having three is just barely enough. Uh, the um, the Fascher is really nice. Um, I also wanted one more bomber, if you remember. Having two fighters at first is a little overwhelming meaning that it's not enough. Um, I may eventually want a third. The other option is, should I overstrength? Yeah, let's do that. Let's overstrengthen whatever infantry I do have. 
That only costs 38. Let's over strengthen this one. That costs 96. So at least my infantry are going to be as strong as possible. up all my core slots. Okay. So we got an anti-tank here and an infantry. Here you can see that's a looks like a oh that's anti-air. Infantry, infantry, and artillery in Benghazi. Infantry anti-tank. Artillery, infantry, there are some planes over there. All right, I think I want to form basically two units. One unit is going to streak through this desert, and I'm not going to worry about them because they're going to be tanks. And then, you know, basically get in and take these objectives. And then the other uh, one is going to go north to Benghazi and then go along the coast here. So the one-man wrecking crew is going to start right on the front line here. And actually all three infantry can start together with my Fallschirmjäger. Ooh, what am I going to do with my Fallschirmjäger? I mean, one idea is to like paratroop in up here that's a smart idea. The other idea is maybe land down here and then come in from the rear. This is actually um, an interesting dilemma, but I'm going to put them... Oh no. They're not even... Uh... I guess I don't have paratroopers. So basically, they're walking on the ground. So we might as well do that. And then let's get both of our artillery. Okay, I'm at 38 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video and we'll start this one fresh. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome, stay healthy and safe.